August 2018 Learning Nugget, Learning Through Letters, The Surprising Roots of Online Learning. Read for you by Alex Williamson. The Learning Nugget is back after its summer break. We hope that any of you who took a little time off enjoyed yourselves and are feeling just as re-energized as we are. Being able to learn from anywhere is becoming increasingly important to students of all ages. Proof of this can be seen in an amazing statistic related to TipTop's own field of language education. A report from Research and Markets predicts that the digital online language course market will grow by close to 19% between 2018 and 2022. However, the concept of taking a class remotely isn't exactly a new one. The practice has existed since at least the 19th century. Of course, no matter how slow your office PC is, there's no way it was around back then. Those early distance learning classes weren't conducted digitally, but through old-fashioned snail mail. In this month's Learning Nugget, we take a look at some interesting facts about these types of classes, which were called correspondence courses. Just like today's online courses and learning apps, Correspondence courses offered people the chance to learn from anywhere they happened to be. What may just seem like a matter of convenience today, however, was seen by distance learning pioneers as an important way to make higher education more democratic. In a paper discussing the history of distance learning, scholars Bill Anderson and Mary Simpson said that the creators of early correspondence courses saw it as their mission to help groups without easy access to education institutions further their learning. The two largest of those groups were women and working class people. Just like the broad range of online courses available today, correspondence courses made use of a variety of teaching methods. In his book, The Evolution, Principles, and Practices of Distance Education, Julia Holmberg describes the very different ways two important 19th century correspondence course leaders, William Harper, USA, and H.S. Hermod, Sweden, brought education to anyone with paper, pencils, and a mailbox. Harper sent students new lessons and instructions, along with an exam, each week, expecting students to work quickly and on a set schedule. Hermod, on the other hand, started by sending out two lessons at once. Students could work on the first lesson as long as they wanted and send it in when they were done. They could then work on their second lesson while waiting to receive corrections. As soon as the instructor received the first lesson, they would mail the third lesson to the student. That way, the student had the third lesson to work on when they finished their second lesson. However, Hermod, unlike Harper, didn't think that time was that important and stated, one student may complete a course in three months and another the same course in two years. For many of TipTop's clients, it may also be interesting to know that some people date the beginning of organized distance learning back to a program developed for Germans to learn French. In 1856, German Gustav Langenscheidt, yes, the man behind the yellow dictionaries with the turquoise L, and Frenchman Charles Toussaint, created a correspondence course where learners paid a small amount to receive bi-weekly letters. These contained French texts and German translations with activities that made students read, translate, and speak aloud. You could take an exam after finishing a set of letters, and if you passed, you were awarded a diploma. Their correspondence school, which expanded to teaching languages like English and Hebrew, lasted from 1856 to 1936. Clearly, learning through the mail isn't likely to make a comeback. Still, as demand increases for something that seems as modern as online learning, it's interesting to think about its roots in the 19th and early 20th century technique of correspondence courses. Many ideas behind it, like the freedom for anyone from anywhere to have access to education, are still relevant today. In fact, TipTop's own newly available online courses owe plenty to the legacy of correspondence courses. We just have the advantage of using internet cables instead of mail routes, so we can give real-time lessons instead of making students wait days or weeks. That way, we can teach at the speed that's best for you, not at the speed of Deutsche Post.